A victory here today will ensure Australia meets New Zealand. And after that, it's a really an uphill battle, you would say. They would have to play the CONCACAF runner-up and, of course, the third team from South America after that. But let's go through the team lineups. And first of all, the Tahitian team. And the Axe has hit Tahitian football in a very big way this week. The coach, Francois Ferez, has been sacked and he's been replaced by former national team player, Bernard Beirua. Also, three new faces from last week, the goalkeeper, Ricky Fassien, and the strikers, Gassien, the number 10, and Amaru, the number 11. Between them, just two international appearances for their country. Australian coach, Eddie Thompson, has been forced to make one change to the team, which defeated Tahiti 3-0 last week. Number 12, Ian Gray, comes into the team for any tapai, who is out because of illness. Gray will play it right back, and that means that Damien Morrie will switch into the right midfield position. But certainly a formidable team there. The Australian Coca-Cola Socceroos have certainly found their mark, particularly in the last two weeks. It was a tentative start, you could say, against the Solomon Islands. The winner coming from Tom McCulloch, who's out, of course, for this series because of injury. And last week, it was a great effort indeed, winning 3-0 away from home in Tahiti. And the referee today, Kaltatak Kalokis, from Vanuatu. This is his first World Cup fixture and ninth international game. And a great day here. You could say for football's like our ambassador, the sun has disappeared. There's a bit of a wind going around and I must say uh, conditions are pretty good for football. Yes, uh, definitely good for football. Uh, it's a little bit windy. Um, I hope, I don't know who that's going to favour. Obviously uh, the Tahitians don't play aerial balls too often, but uh, we'll see how it goes. But it was uh, actually on this day four years ago when Australia played Brazil in the Seoul Olympics. And two days before that, they defeated Yugoslavia. So uh, a few years on, the Socceroos are up here at Perry Park, the first World Cup international here. And of course, the first international since uh, it was back about uh, 1984 when they played China. And uh, a couple of players were in the squad in those days. Uh, Ian Gray from memory. And uh, I think you'll uh, recall that Paul Wade was there as well. As we await Mr. Kolokis to get us underway, Carl Veard on the ball next to him, Mike Peterson, who had a great game. And Peterson looks straight away for Alistair Edwards on the left-hand side. And, of course, a victory today will sew up this group one of the Oceania qualifying phase. As Wade just knocks it back for Ian Gray, who's really determined to prove a point or two today. He looks again for his captain. And Wade, who's tagged by Leonard Layton, the most experienced player in this Tahitian team. Layton's played oh, just on about 33 inter uh, international appearances. And Paul Wade, the most experienced player, of course, for the Socceroos. He's played 56 full internationals and has scored seven goals. Of course, he scored the third goal last week. Again, Alistair Edwards, in a similar situation in Papaete, where Mori had come up for the header. He's gone near post and hit it away by Leighton. Jurakovic. Peterson. And that's one thing they'll be trying to do today is like uh, the Tahitians play the offside trap and uh, that uh, brought them down uh, when Carl Viet scored in the, uh, the last minute of the first half last week and uh, I'm sure they'll be concerned about that today. Yeah, obviously uh, that was a beautiful effort last week from Carl Viet to, to score. I think they'll be playing very attacking football, these Tahitians. They've got, they got nothing to lose. They have to win today. So uh, we'll see how they do play the offside trap. And judging by the changes, they're playing uh, with uh, three attacking players in Gassien Amaru and the captain Tunu. But on that far side, it's uh, infringement picked up uh, by the referee on Mehmet Jurakovic. And Jurakovic in a sort of unaccustomed position of... Uh, Left back, he usually operates in the centre of the defence or sweeper or right back. But with uh, the likes of Vidmar, Van Blurk and uh, the left-sided players uh, in Europe, there's plenty of uh, positions up for grabs at this stage in the Coca-Cola soccer rules. And Alistair Edwards, who joined the squad in Tahiti last week, and Viet was looking for Edwards. And now it's with Edwards, he's got Mori free on his right. And Mori was screaming for the ball on the right-hand side. It didn't go to him, but nonetheless, a pretty impressive move from the Coca-Cola soccer rules. Eta Eta looks up, finds his captain in Tunu. That's not a bad ball at all. A good decoy run by Gassien. Gassien and Zabika. And Zabika gets down. Not enough power to really test out Robert Zabika. But Gassien, who's come into the side, is making his debut today. That was a good feint and a good turn. And not enough power in the end, though. Yeah, quite a bit of skill there. I'm actually quite surprised. Beautiful turn there. Nice shot at goal, but 
could have been a bit better, but yeah, they're opening up quite well, these Tahitians. Well, it was the first clear cut opportunity falling to the Tahitian team. We could be in for an open uh, open game today, Edwards. Viet. A very physical challenge coming in from Leighton. And they're looking for the switch for Luka on the left. Gray keeping close, tabs on him. Luka and Gray. Back to Epeeta. Peterson just putting uh, De Maria. And Mike Peterson, uh, unlucky not to score on two occasions last week. But he really had a great game in Papaiti. Australia having a pretty good uh, record this year in internationals. 16 matches they've won, 9 and drawn, 2 and lost 4. A internationals. They've played 13, won 8, drawn 2 and lost 3. And that's not a bad little strike at all coming in from the captain to North. Of course, Zabika was right behind it, and John Tunu out to prove a point too. He was taken off uh, during that game last week in Tahiti, and would have been demoralising for the captain. And Zabika having a bit of work to do early on. Interference from the people that no one there for the was Peterson hoping for Edwards. Too much behind that. In Tahiti, newcomers to world football. They only joined FIFA back in 1990. And for a population of uh, around 180,000, there's only 4,500 registered players, but there is a 12-team national league. And that national league is in recess as the team uh, is busy preparing and in the throes of their World Cup campaign. Their first ever World Cup campaign. I should point out that quite a few of these players have I I experience in France because the winner of the League and Cup in Tahiti and the winner of the League and Cup in New Caledonia play in a round-robin tournament and the winner goes straight into the fifth round of the French Cup. Is that so? Uh, and it's, it's something that uh, I picked up in my travels last week in Tahiti, but that is a, obviously a great opportunity for some of these players. And one of these players, Renaud Demarie, you look out from the number 14, he spent two seasons with Nantes in France. And a lot of these players are out to uh, follow uh, similar paths. And of course, the coach, the newly appointed coach, Bernard Bayrouha, he's related to... Uh, Vairuha, who plays in the French national team, Cousins. It's with Ian Gray, 13th international. Wayne, doing well to evade that challenge from Lofena Romatia. And the flag's up for offside against the captain. And Eddie Thompson was talking about uh, complacency not being a problem for his team this week. It's always sort of difficult, Zach, uh, when you, you know you just need a win out of two games and you've beaten the team 3-0. I suppose deep down you know that you can probably do the job, but you've got to really be on the ball from the kickoff. Yeah, obviously. It's very difficult playing against uh, teams which you're expected to win against. But uh, there's a lot of competition up for stakes and a lot of positions uh, available for a lot of players. So I think a lot of players are out there to prove a point, make themselves to cement the position in the team. Well... Two of those uh, players from your Olympic team have done extremely well, Damien Morrie and Carl Viet. Viet, of course, two goals in two appearances. Again, the predictable throw from Andrew Mark. We'll probably look for Wade here or Tobin. Wade was up there, but so was Leighton. Now, Peterson. Peterson was thinking of Mark. The flag goes up. And, well, it was touch and go. Touch and go. The linesman, Jean Calmet, uh, was right on the spot there. But Andrew Martha's has really cemented his place in the centre of the defence, keeping the likes of uh, Andrew Bernal and Darren Stewart out of this starting 11. Definitely a good selection for the Australian team, Andrew Martha. I, I played against him once when he was playing for Sunshine George Cross a few years ago, and I found him a very difficult defender to get around. Now Tobin, that's a beautiful ball here. It's on the break. Seventh minute in, Viet should make it 1-0. And just wide from Carl Viet. He did everything bar the, the final finish. Yeah, I noticed he gave the touch, touch too hard, the first touch. I don't know if that put him off, but uh, he didn't hit, didn't shrug that so well. He could have normally, done a lot better from there. Yeah, normally Viet puts him away. We'll see on the away. replay here. Viet just the keeper to beat. He did all the hard work. Kept his cool here. Was unfazed, but the finish just too wide. And I think he picked the wrong corner. That was easily the best chance of the game, but uh, I'm sure that if Viet gets opportunities like that, he'll put away a couple of goals today. But being a striker, I know a little bit about missing chances like that early in the game. I hope it's, it's off his mind now and he just 
forges ahead and thinking, you know, work hard and your goal, goals will come. I didn't think you missed chances like that. Don't <laughs> Always do. And of course, uh, you're back home because you're in uh, a bit of, uh, well, you, you've got some problems. I'm in limbo. Like, you're I'm in, in limbo, limbo at the, the current limbo. moment. Yes, I'm just trying to work out what I, what I really want to do with my career. And uh, things aren't 100% uh, at Mechelen, but I'll probably have a word with that about with, with Les Murray at half time. That's fair enough, and uh, hopefully you can sort it all out because we've got now almost 40 uh, of our players in Europe, and Carl Vitt is one that would probably, uh, I would think, follow a similar path to the likes of yourself. Definitely. Yeah, he's definitely got the talent. I thought most of the boys who played for the Oliwus would, de would deserve a contract overseas and would earn it, and uh, obviously here, because of these international games, uh, they'll look good in his uh, football resume. Certainly will. Didn't harm the likes of... Tony Vidmar and Milan Blagojevic. It's Vid on the ball now. That was a late instruction from Cyril Rayocha. Solid boy, isn't he? <laughs> very solid boy. They're pretty strong in the centre of the defence last week. It was just the set pieces that brought them undone and perhaps some uh, man marking. But uh, we've got to realise that they're only newcomers to uh, international football and as time goes on and we play more games against them, they're surely going to improve. It's a rehearsed move that's gone wrong. And Marth having a bit of a push and shove battle in the centre of that defence. Marth was hurled back there. Play continues though. Peterson. Wow. And flag up against Mori. And again, that was a close call. Yeah, but he was definitely offside. I could see that from my eye point of view here. But uh, Mori, uh, he'll be happy to play in the right midfield position today. Yeah, well, I know Damien quite well. I roomed with him uh, in Barcelona, and uh, he definitely likes to get forward, and he's very quick, one of, the, one of the quickest players, solid, and I think he'll relish this position. And one of the most likeable uh, characters in Australian football, too, Frogger. Yeah, def definitely a comedian, definitely character. Milan Ivanovic across to uh, Mehmet Djurakovic. Like many players, just happy to be in that starting eleven. Wade fighting hard, and he wins it for Edwards. Edwards looks up for support. Gray's free on the far right. If they can get it across here, Peterson will look for him. And there it is for Gray. Mori on his right. And deep in the box is Viet. Gray. And no runners this time. And Ricky Bassien, the 20-year-old keeper, promoted today. Across to Jean-Pierre Bewida. Ten minutes gone in this game, there's yet no score. Both teams with one chance at a piece. And it hasn't been too bad a game. Yamari was hoping to find Ebeta. Gray there, of course. There was a bit of a virus going around the team during the week. Marth and Mori and Peterson were affected by it. Of course, Tapai was, and he's out of the game today. Djurakovic. Never forget the sign of Mehmet Jurakovic after that Solomon Islands game. He was so dehydrated they were thinking about taking him to the hospital. That's how hot it was. And I'd be delighted to play in uh, familiar conditions like this. Mehmet Jurakovic. Looks up. Looking for Wade. Wade is there for the Socceroos. Back now to Mehmet Jurakovic. Low cross. Edwards was hoping that uh, Almaty would leave it. Yeah, the deep ball by Peterson, Murray, and the header by Gray, not a bad header at all from Vincent. 1-0 Australia, Carl Veer, Johnny on the spot. Yep, good to see that the goalkeeper dropped that ball. Fell, fell beautifully there for Carl Veer. Well, no mistake. Well, three goals in three internationals for the senior team. And that's what he's being paid for. Beautiful ball by Peterson. And we've got to pay credit for the header here from Gray, putting the pressure on the keeper. And Viet was there, of course, to stick it home. 1-0 Australia. And that's a score and a definite differ. And that's not a bad camera angle as well. And Carl Viet will not forget this series the rest of his days. Three goals in three appearances. The, the boss can't ask for much more. Gray. It's not a bad one for Mori, but Lukas was pretty nippy as well. I think Eddie Thompson would be happy with the start. That's quite an early goal. It certainly is. It could really open up the game. And 
victory today will ensure a, a meeting with New Zealand. That'll be late May next year. And uh, having spoken to Eddie Thompson, he's confident that he'll get uh, quite a few of his overseas-based players for that game. And there's talk of uh, the Coca-Cola Socceroos playing against the United States around that time as well, which would be a good hit-out if they can line it up beforehand. Well, we saw in the last qualifiers how New Zealand can upset Australia, so definitely there, there was no way he's going to go there with an understrength team. He has to go in there with his full best strength team. Certainly is, and uh, of course, you recall that the last time we played a World Cup qualifier was in Sydney. The 1-1 draw knocked us out against Israel. Israel, of course, from Europe, uh, Group 6 with France, Austria, Sweden, Bulgaria and Finland. It's with Ben Gray now for Wade. Beautiful ball. A lovely ball indeed, wasn't it, Zlatko? Gray looks up, was hoping for the near post, and it was just too hard for Peterson to get back onto. Temari cheekily back. Look out, and just the final touch letting him down. And again, the offside trap, they've really played it well today, haven't they? Well, I can see what you meant when you asked me that question about the offside trap. Yeah, well, they played quite well. It's good to see. Not for the Aussies, though. <laughs> Not for the Aussies. But you're not a parochial person, are you, Zlatka? No, not a nationalist, no. Te Wida, on that right side. And, well, Amaru was taken out late, but the referee allowed play to continue. Wade, he's thinking about Viet. Now, Djurakovic. A bit of overlapping down that left side. The uh, the wide players have been busy today. Gray and Jurakovic. You definitely get the ball out wide. It's, it's good to see from the Australians. Some good play. Oh. Peterson taken out. And the pitch in absolutely marvellous con condition, considering they've had a full season of eight league football up here at Perry Park. And Australia are leading by one goal to nil. Carl Viet, the scorer in the 12th minute. And I'm sure that all his family and friends back in Adelaide would be uh, delighted of course Viet was born in Wyala and so was Jakobanovic and Alistair Edwards as Wade gets up again unselfishly back inside but there was cover there for Tahiti and Luca and Marth Marth was the man uh, pinned for the, uh, the challenge it's always nice to see boys you played with score goals and it's good that Carl came back from that little mishap that he had in that first minute, first few minutes there when he missed that easy opportunity, but it's good to see he scored. I think he'll have a good game now. There's no doubts about that. He could have uh, put away a couple more last week in Tahiti as well. But it's the sort of start Eddie Thompson was hoping for. Peterson to Edwards. Gray's across here. Wade. Coca-Cola Socceroos are playing well. Good passing there. Gray, trying to take Luca on. Luca's a pretty uh, seasoned customer. The linesman had flagged. Referee allowed play to continue, and it's an Australian throw. There's been a growing dilemma for uh, Eddie Thompson, the right back and left back position. Of course, the left midfielder and striker's role as well. Now, Omar Deer, he looks up, and he finds Harold Amaru. Tunu has got one to chase. Not a bad move at all from Tahiti, but just that final touch. Again, a similar pattern to what we saw last week in Papayete. Once they get into the Australian defensive third, just that last touch letting them down. And you, I suppose you put it down to inexperience as well in international football. You're always quite strong there at the back, Milan Ivanovic. A lot of experience. It's always going to be difficult against, against him. And of course, Alex Tobin today is playing his 25th international in the Coca-Cola Socceroos. And there's not too many men up there for this free kick, which surprises me. He'll probably try the long-range shot, which Zabika had one moment of concern last week, and there was no real trouble for him there. Oh. Zabika, again, aiming for Edwards. The widow right on his back. 
Viet. Good night on for Edwards. Way to square. And Murray is there as well. Wade should go for it. He tries to chip the oh. keeper. Not a bad idea at all from the captain. Oh, it's nice to see. It was yeah, a good well, idea. Good idea, definitely. A lot of confidence there. When the keeper, Fasian, would have expected Wade to perhaps knock it square to Murray, who was free, Wade had uh, really had to go for it from there. It was a great so idea. Wade did a dink, and then, then he decided to chip it off. Peterson. Got Gray, but he plays it safe. Marth. Again, a familiar pattern down this right side with Wade getting together with Ian Gray. And it's a throw in for Australia. And will Marth take it? Wade wants it. But Gray can throw long. They can all throw long. Now Marth. Peterson. And he was hoping for Murray, but Murray was coming back. And again, the offside trap. And that's been the fifth, fifth offside rule for Australia. I've noticed on the right-hand side here that Australia are really building up well, and Paul Wade and Ian Gray, they're doing well. They've combined extremely well. And again, Peterson, they've really uh, taken a liking to Peterson because they know that he's a good ball player and he provides the, uh, the attacks of Australia with a, a lot of impetus and he plays some good balls and already he's been fouled about four times now. They've obviously analysed their last game and they've seen that, yeah, he's a definitely good ball player, so they're going to have to put him out of the game. Well, Wade was pushed off the ball by Temaria. Good decision by the referee. Kalta the duck, Kalokis from Vanuatu. Definitely a hard name to pronounce. Could be worse. It could be Aaron Basic. <laughs> and what's in the name anyway? Mike Peterson on the ball. The winner getting his team organised. Edwards makes the run. Peterson. We're hoping for Mori. Now Edwards again. They're all running out the Tahitians. Jurakovic is on. Well, I thought Jurakovic was on side that time. Jurakovic looked up and he knew he was on side. And uh, he's got every reason to be disappointed there. And Mehmet Jurakovic had realised basically what they were doing there. And I, he, he came from deep. It was a clever ball there. I could see, I could see them two looking at each other. And I definitely timed it well. Pity was just called offside. This is a great run from the former Nun player, Demari. But every time he gets into these situations, he doesn't really have too much support. Gassien gets it back. Well, Romati was hoping for the, uh, the long drive. That's a little bit ambitious. Very ambitious. And Edwards only has Veard ahead of him. And Veard again taken out. And it wouldn't be surprising if the referee brings out the card again soon. Edwards easily evades Ete at the pace, but too much behind the ball. Leighton came across. Now Ete Eta. Easy interception for Wade. And again, now there's just been a bit too many fouls. I think the referee's got to uh, pull the card out. Do you think, Zako? Yeah, well, yeah. I was going to actually comment on that. They're quite physical, quite strong, and uh, well, there's been yeah, a few, few hard challenges. They weren't that physical last week, but uh, they're getting desperate because they know that Australia are getting into situations where they can put a few chances away. And Peterson again, looking and hoping for Tobin. A good jockeying by Tunu and Alex Tobin, a, a, a real fixture in this team. Made his debut back in 88 against Chinese Taipei. His 25th A International. 30 minutes are up. As you can see, the Coca-Cola Socceroos are leading by just the one goal. It could have been two or possibly three. Ivanovic. Australia definitely controlling the tempo of the game. It's, uh, I don't want to be too critical, but it's, it's more like a training run. You get that impression? Viet. And that comes off Luca, and Fasian keeps it in. Good work from the keeper. Was that a 
I obviously can't afford to be too critical of my position, but no, no. But yeah, it's, it's they're going through the motions a little bit. They're knocking the ball around well, but in yeah, they're, they're knocking the ball around well, keeping position, but there's no real super thrust forward. And uh, offside against Tunor, and that didn't look like an offside to me either. Marth across to Gray. Marth wants it back, and he'll get it. Peterson. Good ball for Gray. And Murray just the control letting him down. Well, my dear, looking for Tunor. Good challenge from Alex Tobin. Peterson. Marth. There's not really much there for Gray, except for Mori. That's one, two. A beautiful move. Mori. Back for Peterson again. Wade. And good cut out work from Amaru. Drakovic. Luka up. And there was plenty of support for Tahiri. Tamari across now to Tawira. Tamari. The playmaker for Tahiri. Great ball. Beautiful ball. One for Tawira to chase. And so is Gray. There's not really many uh, Tahitian players forward. Gassian looking for Tawira again. And it was always going to be a tough job for him. Jean-Pierre Tawira usually plays it right back. He's switched to the left. Australia have scored now six goals in three World Cup qualifying matches. Goal scoring have been a major problem for the team, particularly with the likes of uh, Arnold being based in Europe and before him, Rosmina, who'd retired. It looks like they found a man in Carl V at three goals in three games. Yeah, definitely, he's doing well. That's unless he goes overseas as well. Yeah. <laughs> That's the probably likely outcome of uh, what's going to happen in Carl V's life. Definitely a potential overseas player. But I think uh, I, I know Carl quite well and uh, from the Olympic Games though. And uh, I, I know his line of thinking and he's really a homegrown boy. He loves, he loves Australia and uh, I think he'd probably want to stay here up until after the World Cup and if he's selected in the, in the squad. And, then I think you make a move then if, if the right right thing comes along, the right club. There's some real concern there for Cyril Rayocha. A youngster of great potential. Uh, he's just playing his third game for Tahiti. And he could be uh, could be replaced. It looks like the signal's gone out to replace him. And let's just hope it's not too serious. trying to work out exactly which player would come on for him but uh, he looks in all sorts of all sorts of bother there and that'll be a real blow for them because he's a tough man in the center of the defense looks like there could be a little cut there Well, this is Australia's 61st World Cup match. And Eddie Thompson, as you can see on the bench, will be fairly happy. 1-0. This is their 61st World Cup match. And his assistant coach isn't there today, but his assistant coach was the uh, first man to score for Australia in the World Cup. Back in 65 against North Korea. Les Scheinflug, who's away with the the young Socceroos and the next well for a youth tournament. Where the Australian senior team will obviously have to uh, find out whether or not they're going to go to the World Cup once they qualify for the first few stages. 
definitely I think the Australia building up to the to that to those games to be playing out there too well I'm just trying to check and see who the change is if in fact there has been a change I, uh, I can only count 10 out there, so they're hoping that he'll uh, he'll be all right to continue, but it will be a big blow to their team if Raoja does not continue in this game. As the sun comes out here at Perry Park in Brisbane, for this FIFA World Cup qualifier, the Coca-Cola Socceroos are leading by one goal to nil. In it comes. Tobin was fighting hard. Great play by Tewida. Although uh, put the mocker on him because the pass was too too much onside. Well, onside I thought Wade was offside. Wade looks up, square inside, but not hard enough for Viet, and the keeper was there again. Well, it looked like Wade was in an offside position, and uh, there just wasn't really much uh, of a chance for Viet getting on the end of it. Viet made actually a very good run, I could see, and uh, pity that uh, Paul Wade didn't pick him up. It was unselfish too. I thought maybe Wade might have gone. Yeah, uh, he could have cut in and had a shot himself. They're still with 10 men. Tahiti, Rayoka still off. Ma, too much behind that as well. He's looking for the runner again. A little bit disappointed with that. And uh, yes, maybe he should have done better there. Saw him clutching his, uh, his face there. He wasn't too happy. Good skill. Well, Looked like the ball was out, but play continues, and that'll be out this time. Too much of Tewida. <laughs> but just, uh, I was mentioning earlier, this is our 61st World Cup match, and Australia have won 24 and drawn 20, and lost 15, and scoring hasn't been that much of a problem. They've put away 110 goals over the years, and conceded 63. But scoring's been a little bit of a problem today, Zucker with the uh, half chances that Australia have had. It's still early days. You never know. Plenty there's, of time. There's, there's plenty of time. This was a, a familiar pattern last week. As uh, a pretty committed challenge came in from Leighton on Murray, and Murray has, uh, has some doubts about, uh, about that one. He's not one to normally complain. No. So. We'll have a look here. Leighton came in. Oh, no, definitely. Mori, well. Huh. Let you be the judge. Edwards looks up and Marf again is at the near post with Tobin. Here it comes. Fasien has come out for it. Just parried it. And again, another corner this time on the far side. It wasn't a very good attempt there from the goalkeeper. No, it's the second one he spilled too. The first one, of course, resulted in the Viet goal. Such a young age, it's probably his first first game, I believe. It's it's his fifth appearance in first World Cup game. And, oh, what a game to play in, and Viet. Very good attempt. The angle was pretty tight. And Carl Viet, the third opportunity for him in the game. Could have had a hat-trick already. <laughs> Could have had a hat-trick. As you say, there's plenty of time left for that. And I'm sure if they provide him with enough chances, he'll put away three. There's just on five minutes of normal time left in this first half. The Coca-Cola Socceroos are leading by just the one goal. Wave. Edwards has to fight hard for it. Good challenge from Amaru. And some of the fans not too happy with that decision. Amaru is the man on the ground. The debutant. Uh, rather, his third appearance, I should say. It's Garcien, number 10, who is debuting. He doesn't play in the uh, National League, Amaru. He's from the first division. Aroe is the team that he uh, is with. So Eta Eta will take the free kick. And Tahiti are still down to 10 men. And now Viet, the keeper coming off his line, as he had to, and Edwards crossed away. The keeper scrambling to get back, but he has enough time. 
Mori, Viet and Edwards are in the box. And now Viet trying to lay it on for Gray, and it was just cleared away by Leighton. It was a good idea, then. it was a great idea. And it looked like Gray was going to come through for it too. Yeah, just, just that little bit extra of a touch he needed. A bit more pace. Gray. Great ball by Ian Gray. Definitely covered him up on the right. And the deep ball again, but not deep enough really. Too close to the keeper. This time he does extremely well, but the throw was... It was pretty keen because Tim Adi was surrounded by three or four of the Socceroos. Lead up's been, lead up's been pretty good, both on the left and right hand, so it's just the final ball. Just hasn't been too clinical. Mark. Looking for the one two, which came off. Drakovic chasing down on Eta Eta. And that, that'll be a throw for the uh, Socceroos. Now Marth. He's very committed with the challenges, and so is Andrew Marth, though. Tamari. Cross now to Gassian. And of course, there's plenty of numbers always in cover for Australia. They're really sort of lacking ideas up front, Tahiti. There's not really much up there for them. I think we could put that down to solid Australian defence. Yes. It's uh, been one of the features of the Australian uh, team in recent years. <laughs> Well, this year, in, um, in those 15 matches the Australian team has played, they've conceded eight goals, which is a pretty good record indeed. And it's been against some quality country. Yes, yeah, certainly quality has. Goals. Croatia, Sweden, Argentina, Uruguay. Tobin up. Edwards. And the draftsman from Adelaide City finds his teammate. What a year it was for uh, Adelaide City. Cup winners and final winners, Viet. And Peterson got it on for Martha, now it's back again with Ivanovic. Peterson had a bit of room. Unselfishly back for Martha, he's got a pretty good, well, he's got a good shot from that sort of range. Ooh, what a try from Andrew Martha. Just a minute before the break. Some good lead up work there too, it's actually a very good shot. Superb strike on goal. He should be happy with it, really. He was closed down by Leighton. She's a short backlift, really, and he got so much power behind it. And, uh, not a bad attempt at all. There's only been really four good chances for Australia. And one has resulted in a goal as Peterson bit of a nudge. And Ian Gray, who's seen a lot of uh, a lot of the ball today. Peterson. Again, it's back for the Marconi man, Ian Gray. Murray. We're playing stoppages and there's about a minute and a half to two minutes. They're still playing with Tim Menta. He's desperate to uh, ensure that Rayocha gets back into the game in the second half. Gray against Tewida. Gray gets around him. And the ball wasn't too bad, although Eta Eta was there. And I've got to pay credit to the Tahitians because they've been covering up at the, at the near post. As you can see, the 45 minutes are up. Just the one goal splitting the teams. Edwards. Then the keeper should have uh, no trouble, which he does. I'm surprised that uh, they haven't brought on a substitute because it's, it must be very serious if he can't come back into the game unless they're stitching him up and saving him for the second half. I definitely can't see no logic in what they're 
they're trying to achieve there. Surely a replacement, uh, your World Cup qualifying game. Tahiti has got nothing to lose. A victory here really would uh, make it an open group. I think he's been off for about 10 minutes now, is it? Five yes, uh, he, was, he went off in the 36th minute. We've had 46 and a half minutes of play. Oh, no. That was a fair challenge. He went for the ball. But Wade won't argue. He'll be disappointed and he'll just accept the decision. Definitely doing a lot of running there for the Australians. Paul Wade, I've noticed today. And it was much the same in the first two games in the Solomons and, of course, in Tahiti. And they're in a bit of trouble there. The old back pass rule, they were knocking it around amongst themselves, but that, that in fact, is the half-time whistle. So with uh, a half that started so well for Australia, Carl Viet had made it uh, one nil in the 12 minutes. And after that really is that go, I thought Australia perhaps should have grabbed uh, at least two or three goals, but uh, Eddie Thompson, knowing Eddie, as you do, We'll be saying yes, I do. quite a few harsh things uh, to the players at half-time. I think he'll be happy with the, with the way it's going. It's 1-0. As you said, it's an international game, and 1-0 uh, is as good as 6. But, uh, I mean, Australia's pushing, pushing forward. They're building up well. It's just that they're not, they're not actually that final ball is not coming in. And they just, you know, obviously, they're, they're not scoring as many goals and, uh, as they could, but it's going along. I, don't, I can't really see the Tahitian scoring, and uh, I, I think Australia would just like to get a little bit more into a different gear and obviously maybe put in a goal and to certify definitely that they're going to win this game. Yeah, I think Australia will win. There's no doubts about that. But uh, Eddie Thompson will have a few words to say as would Les Murray, who's down on the sideline at the moment with uh, one of the reserves today. Of course, the Sydney Olympic side trap in that first half. Well, in the gallery today, uh, obviously because he does live in this city, is Alan Hunter, who is a uh, former Socceroo and currently with Brisbane United. Alan, thanks for joining us today. Your impressions of the uh, first half, you've played a few Socceroo uh, games in your time and you know that the offside tactic, offside trap is a frustrating tactic. Yeah, it is very much so, Les. Um, as we've heard in the previous, previous results, New Zealand nil all with um, Fiji, so once again we see that it's difficult playing against lesser opposition. We're doing everything right, I think as has been mentioned before, we have to just, I think, work on the last ball. Some of the crosses have been a little bit poor, so we've just got to be patient and get on the end of a couple of crosses and I think we'll get another couple of goals this half quite easily. Okay, now you've played uh, uh, against New Zealand uh, and of course uh, teams of this kind down the years. New Zealand now looms as a quite a quite a force, quite a formidable side from what we're hearing, even though they could only manage a nil or draw with Fiji. How, would, how should we look ahead to those games? Yeah, well, once again, they've always proved a very, very difficult team. It's a real rivalry, rivalry with uh, the Tasman thing there. But, no, we haven't got anything to worry about if we stick to our game plan. Tomo knows New Zealand very well. He's been around for a few years. These guys have performed very well previously against New Zealand, and we just knocked the ball around and play to our strengths. There's not really many teams in, in our side of the uh, world that can beat us, really. So I think we'll, we'll get through quite comfortably. Alan, this is a new Socceroo side, uh, as you'd be aware. What, where, what are the qualities that this side has that you particularly like, that maybe previous sides didn't have? I think um, very much so. They're a very fast side. You've got a lot more pace. You've got guys like Damien Murray, and I think the skill level's really picked up. Uh, the coaches have been working on that over the years, and I think you see Australian players now um, from junior level are becoming much more skillful. They can juggle the ball on the back of their head and all these sorts of things. So I think that sort of thing's really improved, and I think we're going to get even better for the next years to come. All right, Alan. Well, it's good to see you back in the tracksuit, and uh, look forward to seeing you on the field for Brisbane United this year. Thanks very much, Les. Certainly will. Okay, that's Alan Hunter, former Socceroo, and of course of Brisbane United. Let's go back now to Andy Pascalidis. Yes, we're certainly underway here in the second half. The Coca-Cola Socceroos running from the right to the left-hand side of your screens and uh, having a good look around. There's no changes to the Australian side. And uh, Rayoka, the good news for the Tahitian team is that Rayoka, the number four, is back in the game for his team. He was off the pitch after uh, copping a bit of a knock and he was away for the last ten minutes of the first half, which surprised quite a few of us here at Perry Park. There's Ivanovic, came in with a uh, two-footed challenge which the referee wasn't happy about. And today's match is Australia's 266th full A international. And since we lost to New Zealand in our first match back in 1923, we've won 120 games, drawn 59 and lost 86. And those uh, statistics are uh, proudly brought to you by our researcher, Lou Gautier, who does a, a great job for us at SBS. 
And the job at hand here for the Coca-Cola Socceroos is to uh, put some goals away and get some good practice in with uh, the Solomon Islands, of course, the match next week in Newcastle. And the likely scenario, of course, Australia winning here and going on to face New Zealand in May. But yet uh, another stoppage, and I think Australia really have to put away some chances to get some confidence up, and particularly for a lot of these players, they want to prove, uh, prove a few points to Eddie Thompson that they should be considered for uh, future matches uh, involving the uh, World Cup side. Obviously, with so many foreign players uh, playing ab abroad now in the Australian team, uh, a lot of these players know that when these guys come back, they'll gain more or less automatic selection. And I think players up front are definitely going to have to put the goals away if they, if they want to have an outside chance of being selected. It's a really difficult situation, too, because the local players get upset as... Uh, that was silly. Well, Mike Peterson, let's hope that it's not too uh, serious for him. Jeez, and... Mike Peterson, you don't have to uh, be a lip reader. He's sent him off. That's unbelievable. Surely not. Has he given him a red card? <laughs> Who's he sent off? He sent off Mike Peterson because Peterson got upset about the challenge and he's shown the red card. This is really uh, inexperience from the referee. It might be Mr. Kolokis' first World Cup match in ninth international, but this is the most amazing uh. thing I think I've seen uh, in, in, in all my time uh, as a soccer journalist covering soccer room matches and Never Jurakovic can't believe it. Peterson has been shown the red card. I think he'd be really, really angry with that. That's so silly. Such, such unbelievable. And Stupid. It was a red card that he showed him. And he's telling him, yes, the it's dressing room. Him. Yes, the dressing room. Off you go. And that, that is really unbelievable. Well, the referee had pulled up play because Wade was being battered when the ball was loose. And then, correct me if I'm wrong, Peterson copped a late, a late challenge. A late challenge. And a, a very it. late challenge. I'd like to have a look at that one more time. Uh. And Mike Peterson, and I, I really have to side with the soccer I'm not trying to be biased or anything like that. Peterson copped a late whack. And the, ref the referee has shown him the red card, and this is just absolute there tragedy. It is. On. Now, there's Wade there. He went down, and he was... Look at this. How many kicks is that? Look. And then we'll see it again, hopefully, uh, on replay. Now, it's a difficult angle, but... Um, but uh, Australia are down at 10 men. And, well, all of us here are just... We just can't believe it, and um, that's really going to uh, cause Australia some problems, 10 against 11. And Mike Peterson, Eddie Thompson has every reason to be uh, disappointed with that decision. That definitely puts a new complexion on the game now. A very new complexion indeed. And the Socceroos, they hadn't uh, been booked in two previous qualifying matches. Mike Peterson has shown the red card. That is unbelievable. I don't know if me discussing about yellow cards and all that brought a bad omen, but no, definitely, uh, definitely something, something's not right there. Well, Peterson was frustrated, and uh, 99 times out of 99, I would think referees allow a bit of frustration to go because it's just a natural reaction to copying a strong physical challenge, particularly like the one that he did. And the referee... Uh, I don't know if he's had any football experience himself, but uh, he didn't really uh, do the right thing there. I think it's obviously something no he empathy, said. No empathy at all, because uh, he should have put himself in the player's situation. And that really, uh, unfortunately, has spoiled uh, what had been a, a pretty uh, easy uh, roller coaster ride for the Coca-Cola Socceroos. But I, I, I still think that they'll finish on top in this game. In fact, if anything, that send-off should really spark them now and lift them up. And still silence around this ground. They can't believe it. And uh, 
Well, six minutes into this second half, and this is really going to uh, test the mettle of the Socceroos, and we know about their fighting character and ability to come back when the chips are down. They are leading by one goal to nil, but they're playing with one man less, Jurakovic. And Tobin away, and what you'll find now, Edwards will come straight back into the midfield, and only Viet will stay as the target man, and they'll just hope to hit Tahiti on the break or try and uh, put away another goal in a set-piece situation. I think they'd be definitely looking for one more goal, so that, that would definitely clear up, the, clear up the situation of the game. I definitely can't see Tahiti anyway, it, no, by no means coming back if it's 2-0. Well, let's, uh, let's continue on anyway. Australia are leading. And maybe those chances that they had to uh, add another two goals Hopefully they won't go against the uh, Coca-Cola Socceroos, but nonetheless, I've been trying to uh, recall uh, the last time a Socceroo player was sent off, and can't recall any send-offs this year. Viet. He's got Mori on his right. Oh, good play by Viet. Good possessional play. Gray. You know, there's no doubts about the foul there. And, you know, Will he give a red card? <laughs> I don't think we'll pull the card out, but Australia will get frustrated too if uh, this sort of physical style continues in the second half. We noticed, for, for say, the last 15, 20 minutes of the first half, Tahiti got a bit physical to try and break up those uh, free-flowing movements of the Socceroos. And let's hope the match doesn't get spiteful because there hasn't been real uh, spite aside from... Well, I thought Way was really hard done by in that challenge which resulted in the Peterson send-off. Mark gets up, Mori oh. back inside, and Viet laying it off for Mark! Oh. And there was the opportunity to make it to, and Mark, we saw him in the second half, that fire with a beautiful shot, and he was really going for the, uh, the glory goal, you could say, is Latko, but uh, defenders in that sort of range, they're going to go first time. But a lot of unselfish play here when you would have thought that perhaps some of the players would have gone themselves. Mori yeah. back inside and yeah, the layoff by Viet. Beautiful layoff. I think he just wanted to hit a little bit too hard. I was just thinking about the situation right now. I think the, the referee probably in his mind, he'd probably like to even it up. Sending off the Australian player and uh, if, if, if the Tahitians continue to be so uh, aggressive on some situations. Maybe we'll even itself out. Well, I saw Peterson. Peterson was very frustrated. He said a few words. I don't know what they were, but um, it was more at the challenge. It wouldn't have been directed at the referee. That's where the referee should have just calmed him down and perhaps even given him a yellow if he was upset that much. But now, Mila Novanovic, the former Red Star player. Mori. Mori got up there. And he'll keep that in, will he? He does. He looks for Viet. There was not enough bite behind that. And in the end, it was Leighton who got it away. So the throw in for Australia. The Coca Cola Socceroos. They're up by just the one goal. Mori, great play. Damien Mori, was he clipped? The referee says, no, it's still loose. Oh, this from in front by Viet. Well, well, well. I thought Mori was clipped from the way through. Damien definitely I, I will get that Mori was clipped. Although Viet, uh, Viet really should have put it away in the end, but you look here on replay, it was a great run by Mori. Did well to keep it in there. Oh, definitely. Definitely a definitely penalty. Tahitian defender. Viet should have stuck it away. Don't want to be too critical of Carl, but they're the, the sort of opportunities that you have to put away in World Cup football. But uh, here's another chance. Ten or eleven in Australia creating better chances. Mark back inside. Oh. Again at the back post. My oh my! Within the space of three minutes, Australia could have scored three. The sent sending off has definitely sparked the game up for Australia. Yes, well it should have too, because uh, the players would have been disappointed deep down. But great run here, and Andrew Mark has been so involved in the attacks, and it was a very difficult one because it took a deflection. In, in the defence of Viet there, it would have just thrown him off at the last minute. Some really, really meaningful runs coming forward from Australia. 
Well, three of the best chances have come in the second half for Australia, aside from that uh, open opportunity before Viet scored in the 12th minute. But that was an amazing sequence of play. Within two minutes, Australia had three opportunities. It'll only take one more goal and uh, Australia can uh, breathe a sigh of relief. Yeah, I'm inclined to believe in that type of thinking too. I think so. Just one more goal. One more goal for Australia and that'll be enough. Well, the way they played in the second half, there's every indication that goal will come. But the big question, of course, is when. And that's a beautiful run from the captain. Again, he's made a few of those deep runs inside. Up went Raoka Edwards. Now, Mark, and he was floored, and that should be, well, he's given a red card for Peterson. That is really a yellow card offence. Mark was on his way to goal, and when all the captain goes in the book, and the referee has to be consistent here. We've seen that a few few times. And Andrew Marth is playing a key role in the second half. Definitely a Not as a himself. defender. Not as a defender. He's got a good shot too, and it's in striking range. Well, I don't know who's lining up here, but I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if Marth does uh, does have a go. He'd be pretty confident about it, uh, the way he's been playing in the second half. And that's the beauty of this team when you think about it, the men who can strike a ball from this range. Edwards, Mori, Marth, Jurakovic, Gray, Viet, they can all... Too many to know. Too many. Does Zabika strike it from there? <laughs> They'll have to go for the direct shot, or will they look for the runners? His wave's pretty deep. It's with Edwards. Always going wide, Alistair Edwards. There's a sweet left foot certainly has and uh, he's put a couple of goals away for Australia two goals in uh, 10 internationals this is his 11th international but no real threat for Fusion in the Tahiti goal great challenge by Jurakovic and a Wade that's a beautiful ball for Edwards Edwards and Eta Eta Good cross that was a better cross. Better cross and the keeper did well. <laughs> Chasing down by Edwards on Amarub. He kept his cool and finds Leonard Layton. Most experienced player. Uh, really, that was a bad ball across. At the moment, uh, Tahiti are uh, down to 10 men as Luka has uh, gone off for some attention. So it's 10 on 10 at the moment. Mike Peterson sensationally sent off in the third minute of play. I'll be talking about that for a long time. The question in my mind is, uh, will he Thompson bring on someone else soon? They're then down to 10 men. Obviously, there's going to be some weary legs. Well, the, uh, the only real defensive player he has is there now. He's on the bench. Viet back inside for Wade. Wade was trying to lay it off for Mori. Gray, the touch on for Mori. They're playing with uh, quite a bit of purpose at this stage. Viet's onside. Well, hoping for the offside. And confusion in the centre of the defence. Allows Gussien to go free, but Ivanovic keeps his cool at the back. All the Tahiti players have come up. And Ivanovic almost losing out. Good play by Mark to Edwards. Fiat and Jurakovic were inside. So 15 minutes into this second half, the 60th minute mark. Australia just by that one goal from Carl Viet in the 12th minute of the game. Uh, could have been four or five by now, particularly in the second half. And Carl could have had his hat-trick. Edwards, the keeper spilling it. I think Alex Tatum was up there hoping to hook it in. To Marie. It's taken out by Tobin.
So Tahiti, who uh, have had very little experience against the Australian opposition, they've decided to make the change. Amaru, the player who came in for this game, is going off. And Jean-Luc Rousseau, who, uh, well, he really impressed me last week, the number seven. He's just come back from uh, three years of study in France and there's talk of him going to France to play football. Now be it. This will be a good experience for him in the second half. The lone man up front will do a lot of shielding. He'll hang on to the ball considerably and look for the midfielders to come through and they've really done that in the second half. He had that same they? job to do uh, for the Oli Roos against Poland and uh, he did did, did do very, very well that day and uh, scored a goal. That uh, made it uh, all up. It was 2-1 at half time in that, in that game. Australian football has been looking really good. Let's not talk about the end of the result, but now. <laughs> Tobin. He's got there again too. Can he keep it in? He should. Well done, Alex Tobin. Back inside now for Mark. Oh, geez, he's got some good close in ball control and one was spearing wide. And really, from that sort of range, you can't blame him uh, to go for it. Well, he's been shooting with his right foot, left foot. He's involving himself. He's coming forward. He's definitely standing out in my eyes. You won't score unless you shoot. Exactly, but uh, he usually plays such a, an important role in the defensive uh, side of things. But this second half, he's been getting forward. He's really looked at uh, the goods. And it will be Mark again. And that uh, goes against Romati. Wade and Romati, the two number sixes. It wasn't the best of free kicks. Now Temadi, the ball player. It's a bit close uh, control, but he just doesn't have the support in this team. So he looks up for some runners, decides against uh, playing it long for Viet. Gray's free on the right side if they want him. Mark goes long for Mori. Lucas there. Oh, nice play, Mori. And the referee pulls it up this time. We're normally so dangerous from these set pieces. See, we'll, I believe we have a little bit of aerial dominance. Well, it was a similar, similar situation when Wade scored the third goal and he's in, in the same position. It's at the edge of the box. And it comes from Gray. And Viet lost it in the sun. We saw across to Timari. Wade back for Tobin. An easy one for Tmur. Now Luca. Gray got in there first and now Ivanovic. He gets in there too. Wade. Mori. Return. Only veered ahead. Mori. Can't get through from Ati. Reocha. So after that flurry of activity in the second half, the game has slowed down a, a tad. Ivanovic. He should have played it back to the keeper Zabika and Rousseau. He's trying to chip by thought Zabika, but I think Milan perhaps would have been better off uh, playing it back to Zabika and he could have just cleared it away for him. That's yeah. where that back pass rule. This is actually the first time that it's uh, been played uh, with the senior team in Australia, the back pass rule. This is the third game that they've uh, played under the new FIFA rules, but there I thought uh, it would have been better off going back to Zabika. And, well, you know, Djurakovic was tripped there, and Ramati can consider himself lucky not to uh, get See a yellow. Red? I'm looking for that red card, I'm waiting red. for it. <laughs> I don't think you'll pull it out. But you'll see on replay here, 
Jurakovic, it was a great run. Looked up, saw Romati, and oh, it's a blatant body check. For the Edwards free kick. Curling away from the keeper, he could only parry it, but luckily for him, Tamari was at the edge of the box. But now for Tewira. Geez, Tahiti are really slow to break from the back. This is where they've got the extra man. They're not really utilising the advantage that they do have. Yeah, I actually don't understand that line of you, thing. You, you, you think that they'd want to get the ball quickly out of there and try and use that extra man, but it, uh, it hasn't been coming for them at all. Not being disrespectful to uh, Mike Peterson, but Australia have looked uh, a better side, considering uh, they've, they've... Well, they are it, a better side. But they've yeah. lost the extra the extra player yeah, yeah. they lost the extra player Tahiti Tahiti have actually they're, they're technical they can play some good football it's just they, I, don't, I don't understand why they're not pushing forward so much I better keep my mouth quiet <laughs> well they uh, they were on this occasion but uh, in the end Eta Eta just couldn't keep it in it's fairly cool here at Perry Park now I must admit I'm a little bit disappointed with the crowd I thought it would have been a bigger crowd Capacity of 8,000. There was about 6,000 here for the New South Wales Queensland game, and there's not really much happening except for the rugby union, local rugby union grand final up here, and perhaps a lot of the uh, people are watching the rugby league live from Sydney. But either way, it's the World Cup football that we're all interested in here as Edwards and Eta Eta. Now, Murray and the keeper wouldn't have seen that really. He saved it with his head. That was a effort. But it was great play from Edwards, an equally impressive work from Damien Morrie. A beautiful uh, run here from Alistair Edwards. And the deep ball, and Morrie, the angle was so fine. And good reflexes there. Good, it's good work from both, both Australians. Damien will be unlucky there. Well, Morrie scored with a header after just two minutes last week. And he'd love to get a second goal in just his third international appearance the senior team. Just notice he's got that outer belly look. Outer belly. Here comes the Edwards corner. Wade. Well, it falls back for Edwards. And again, unselfishly inside. And now, Jerome Tober had plenty of time and still it's in play. And another corner on the far side. And Alex Tobin perhaps had more time than uh, he should have. Yeah, I don't actually know if uh, Paul Wade meant that header back, but it definitely, definitely was good. That's quite an interesting view for the keeper. The not on it. <laughs> It'll come, I think, Carl. It'll come. Well, he's been involved in ooh, five, five goal mouth incidents. And he has scored the goal that shows the score on at this stage of 1 0. Oh, close. Oh, geez, I think if you could really would have loved to put that in, that in, that would have sealed the game for Australia. Could have been four for Carl oh, Beers. I'm glad you said that. <laughs> Luka, the defender, finding Rousseau, and Ivanovic away. And look at this, six red shirts in a circle here, and only Veard in the centre of them. Rayoka, again away by Ivanovic. He's got a difficult job. He has, he has done well in my eyes. Like, I mean, he's, he's missed a few chances, but he's been there at least. Oh, yeah, definitely. And he still holds the goal that it's kicking straight in front, 1-0. Certainly is. Tamati has been all over the park today. 70 minutes are up. Viet to Mori. Mori. It would have been interesting if Murray had kept his balance and not been fouled it because Gray was free on that far side on the right. He was making a good run at the right. It was a good run from Gray. And I just noticed that uh, a few of the uh, Socceroos are warming up on that far side. It looks like, looks like Brown Tapai, who was out of the starting 11 because of illness, and I took Gensch. So Edwards up. The keeper out. And the keeper's been much safer in the second half. A shaky start. It's good to see that Ita Gink has been called up to the team. I remember him when he was playing for Melita and 
admired him as a player. He's very technical. It's good to see that his efforts have been noticed. Now Djurakovic to Edwards. On this left side has worked very well as well. Djurakovic and Edwards. Djurakovic will get there to know the captain is right on his heels though. Edwards. He's thinking of Wade. He's looking for some someone to come from the back. Tobin. To Djurakovic. To Norgut up there. And Eta Eta just knocks it away. Now Temari. Tawira is on his left. That's a great ball for Tawira. Now Djurakovic is scrambling back to pick up on Gassien and Rousseau is being covered by Tobin in the centre. Back now for Luka. They've got a few numbers forward. And again, the, the build-up's just... Slow down now. It's just not really uh, good enough to, to really test this defence. They had the numbers just there when they when they built up. They had two two boys in the centre when the ball exactly, went out there. Exactly, waiting. But uh, slowed it down and slowed it back. Well, the downer goal, you would think, uh, with 27 minutes already up in the second half, that the intensity would increase somewhat. But that hasn't really been the case. We might uh, even have just the one goal splitting the teams at the end of the day. Temari try his long range shot, he, he lines it up, he does, that's not a bad shot, and hooked away, great work from Alex Tobin, you've got to commend the uh, Adelaide City defender because of the, good intuition there, yeah. exactly, Tobin did the right thing, it was an awkward bounce there, looked like it, very awkward for Robert Zabika. <laughs> This isn't a bad run at all. The back in cover was Alistair Edwards. So, some, uh, some anxious moments for the Coca-Cola Socceroo defence. Just be very careful back there with the decisions this referee has been made, making in this game. Uh, penalty. Anything's, anything's possible. Now, Rousseau. Fresh legs. It's mm -hmm. Jean-Luc Rousseau. And the cross and no threat at all for Zabika. You'll need more than that in the air to beat Zabika. Viet. <laughs> he just couldn't get uh, the control he was hoping for. Followed away from him, Murray. Good turn inside on Luka. This is a good run from Damien Murray. That's where he looks really great when he's got that direct run in the shot. And it's all up His first at full A international level. That was unbelievable. It was right. It was unbelievable. That was always going in, though. He hit that, screamed it. Right in the top corner. Beauty. And the relief on the faces of the Socceroos tell the story. Djurakovic looked up and took a, a, took a duck, oh, touch off uh, Leighton. That was the player, and the keeper had no chance in the end. It doesn't matter how they go in. As Two long as they it's in. 2 nil. And the keeper, you really couldn't blame him. He had to change direction. Had a bit of luck there, sort of on the, on the, on the replay. It did hit the, the player's head. Deflection goal, but they all count. Nevertheless, a beautiful strike. Good goal. Well, the scales, you could say, have been balanced after the incident involving Mike Peterson. If you've just tuned in, Peterson was uh, sent off in unbelievable fashion. It would have been for dissension, you would think, but he was fouled badly. And I think yeah. that's a great relief there for Eddie Thompson. 2-0 oh, so now. And I wonder how Tahiti will approach it now. And a favourite well. The scales are uh, well, swaying, does something, right? <laughs> swaying towards Australia. Viet. He'd love to get that second goal he really deserves in this game. Jurakovic. I remember Jurakovic has been rewarded for a busy game today. A lot of running from Jurakovic, particularly in the second half. They've really been playing it down the left. We haven't seen that much of Ian Gray as we did in the first and uh, it looks like a change will be made and in fact it will be Brown 
Greg Brown will come on for Carl Viet. And Viet, three goals in three internationals and perhaps a, a hat trick today. But either way, I think that uh, he should be happy with the way he should be happy. He played well, he scored the goal. He did miss a few opportunities there. But I don't think he'll be crucified for that. And uh, he'll probably be there back for the next game too. Well, it's all an important phase in his career. After being an Ollie Roo, and now Brown comes on in his 11th international. Goalkeeper reads it well, but he drops it a lot. Yeah, it's, it's very inconsistent uh, goalkeeping today. And the Tahitian keeper who was newly promoted, Ricky Fasian. Mori. Gray. Now Brown, who started the first game against the Solomons and was replaced. And, and maybe yeah. he is really keen to make amends. Showed some great skills on the right-hand side. Gray looks up and finds Marth. Marth doesn't pull out of challenges like that. There's no need to uh, rush things, as in Gray just showed. Hey, and well, was that, uh, was that a foul on Marth? Touch and go. Looks like he played through it a little bit, but uh, you'd want to have a look at that on replay. Andrew Marth, easy second half for him today. Solid boy. The import manager from Melbourne, Croatia. He looked up, saw the man on him. That, that was a foul. That's I've a foul seen, in I've my seen eyes. Penalties. I've seen penalties for that. It's really easy to sit up here and uh, pass judgment on the referee, I suppose, Latko. But well, I'm still waiting for him to even it out. I can, I can, I'm waiting anxiously for that. I can imagine what the people around Australia are thinking uh, watching this performance. It's not really a performance of World Cup standard from the referee. Now across for Leighton. Now, on this right side, Eta Eta. Tamari knocking it off for Rousseau. Tobin. And Tobin's there, though. Goes behind uh, Paul Wade. Ivanovic is hoping to find Wade. And Wade will be pulled up. The foul on Romati. There's no doubts about that one. Well, 2-0, the Coca-Cola Socceroos are leading. Could have been at least five or six. I predicted five before the game. I don't know if I'll see that. But, but nevertheless, 2-0 is not a bad result. You know, it's World Cup football, and it doesn't matter as long as you're... Uh, but one goal, that's all that counts. And Marth... An uncharacteristic error. The through ball, there was no one there. Might have thought Viet was uh, up there still. <laughs> yeah, a lot of running from Carl He had, had a difficult job. But there's a lot of positives to come out of this for Australia today. They've, they've really shown some good qualities, particularly uh, the, the work on the flanks from the likes of the Greys and the Morries and the Jurakovic's and the Edwards. They've really worked well on those flanks. The, the defence has held firm. There's been the one, uh, I would think, the one error from Milan Ivanovic. Instead of playing it back to his keeper and try to take the player on, probably aware of the back pass rule. And the midfield was uh, the midfield's been really tight today, particularly Pearson Brown. Now he looks up for Edwards. That's not a bad ball, and the keeper scores and regathers. And he well, the foot was outside the area, but the referee says he threw it from within. Australian throwing. Ten minutes left in the game. The Coca-Cola Socceroos. The two goal buffer. It was a good move. Very yeah, impressed with that move. Good, good turn there from Fred Brown to beat his defender. And he saw that uh, Edwards was deep and it was a beautiful cross a inside. Cross, yeah. Something Australia's been lacking today. That's about the only thing. Your summary of the game was <coughs> spot on. But just that, that final ball just let them down today. And that's something which you can't just practice all the time. The build up is the most important thing. It's just that final thing. It's some days you'll have it and some days you won't. And today, it didn't fall altogether for Australia. The Tahiti have one more game after this against the Solomon Islands. Australia play the Solomons in Newcastle next Saturday. Wade is off. No, he's offside. 
And of course, Tahiti, uh, I mentioned earlier in the, in the day, I didn't get a chance to mention it in full, that uh, this is only their fourth or well, second international against Australia, but fourth experience against Australian opposition. Back in, um, it was 1960, I think, Arpia toured Tahiti in, in 84, Sydney City toured with Eddie Thompson at the helm. And it looks like a change to be made. Chavez, the number 12, is ready to come on for Tahiti. He wasn't even in the squad last week, and since the uh, new coach was appointed, he's been brought in. Uh -huh. Still have a lot of numbers back. And that, I don't really think they're looking forward to uh, scoring. Not so direct. It, just not as hungry as they, as they were in Tahiti, they were a, a, a different style of side, really. They, they put together much better uh, moves, and you just wonder whether the uh, coaching change has affected some of the players. Mori Brown. Good work from Wade. Now, Edwards, Jurakovic will look for him. That's a beautiful ball. They've been knocking it around well, Australia. The Brown. Edwards is onside, easily onside. There's no way he was offside there. And credit too, though, to Rayoka to come across and block. He's had a lot of work to do today, Alistair Edwards. Mm. Down the left side. Yep, he's done a lot of running. You can see that left eye of Rayoka. Must have had some stitches uh, when he was off. Wade. Now Edwards. And he's looking deep for Mori, I would think. There's Mori, too deep though. And Jurakovic screaming down and he keeps it in. Well done, Mehmet Jurakovic. Let's run across on the left-hand side of the right-hand side. Gray was thinking about long. Goes for Mori though. Too much on that one for Damian Murray. So Australia just going through the motions now, really. The two goals, they'll be quite content. Any other goal would be a bonus, but uh, they're really through now. They'll go on to uh, play New Zealand. And that'll be uh, in the end of next May. And Eddie Thompson is uh, pretty confident that uh, quite a few of his European-based players will be available. Finding his mark in Mehmet Jurakovic. Now Edwards. Gray. Oh, he's down there if he wants him. This is a bad little run for me and Gray. And Brown could play back. The referee has to continue, and this time he's pulled it up for the offside. It, I think it was Damien Mori who was offside in that situation. Yeah, it was hard to tell there whether he was or wasn't. Uh, it's touch and go. Lines is right on the spot there. So there's only uh, just on five minutes of normal time left. And the Socceroos are up by those two goals. First one to Viet in the first half, and Jurakovic in the second. Brown. Brown and Rayoka easily evades the challenge of Rayoka. So Brown will leave it for Edwards. Time running out for Tahiti to salvage something out of the game. First World Cup match at Perry Park. Edwards. Well, he tried himself from there. I wouldn't be surprised if he does. He's running out of space. And uh, has he pulled up? Well, I thought he might play a foul, the referee. That's what I might do. Did well to cut in, but I think he chose the wrong side to go. Bad luck. I think he's won a corner though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yes. kick. 
Australia have done oh. extremely well. Yeah, there was a bit of pushing and shoving with uh, Edwards and Rowan right there. And like I said, maybe he's balancing the ledger. Laurie's come over. You wonder whether that wall is 10 metres. <laughs> now, Mori. And the keeper had to have a go at it the second time. Yeah, Tewida. I was hoping to find Eta Eta and Edwards. That's right out of the ground. I could have caught that. Pretty close up to the commentary box there. <laughs> Don't worry, you're insured, aren't you? I am. You covered by insurance? <laughs> You'd have to be playing in Europe. But this is really uh, a game that Australia should be happy about in the second half, particularly, you know, down to 10 men. And uh, the way they fought on, they really picked, uh, picked up their game, I thought, a tad. Yeah, they have. The, the first 15 minutes, was, uh, as we saw, they created a few good chances. And once the. Uh, Mike Peterson got sent off. Obviously, they had to uh, brought a bit an extra spark to the game. And they have the goal now, and that's that's the important thing at the end of the day. Look at Wade chasing hard, burying away. Oh, that's a great ball with his hand. Well, that's a well, you know, that was game for Daniel Murray. He's not even going to pull the card out. Look at this, a blatant hand ball. I've seen players sent off for that in Italy, diving for the ball in that situation. Anywhere in the world. Well. I was just thinking about it because of uh, the Italian football program today on SBS. There's one player sent off for that. But either way, um, not even a book, not even a booking. And I'll tell you what, that's interesting because the player who committed that late in the number five was booked in the uh, 21st minute of the first I half. Had that running from the minor, I thought. He was booked in the 21st minute of the first half, and he should have been shown the uh, the dressing room. I told you my hit prediction was right. <laughs> could have been. Could have been. Well, we'll stab a mask go for it this time. He will. And straight through, but again, just wide of the mark. But uh, good work from Andrew Mark in the second half. You'd think he was playing more as an attacking midfielder than a cent central defender. Well, the Tahitians haven't pushed forward so much, so the, that, the job at the back hasn't been too, too difficult. They've had so many spare bodies at the back of Australia. It's so it's a clever play, because if we didn't push one player forward, we obviously don't need four players to sit back looking after one player. A bit embarrassing, really, for Tahiti when you think about it. They've got the extra man, and you've got guys like Marth in positions where he could have scored a couple himself. Just judging from the possession play, you can clearly see that Australia is just too, too strong for these Tahitians. Now, Murray, oh, good run. Great run, but there in cover was Leighton. He's really lucky to be on the pitch, I think. So Ian Gray, he'll go long this time because Wade is waiting. Oh, well, he's gone short. Wade came to him. Now we saw. Tobin right on his back. And yes, well, Brown was the man judged offside. They've played it well, though. They've played that trap well, Tahiti. Just imagine if they ball there, the way he just flicked it up. It is offside. Yeah, they're playing that well. They did it well in the first half. I noticed a few few comments off, uh, at half time quoting that uh, about the problem with the offside. And, uh, it's been a lot less this second half, but nevertheless, yeah, they, they're still maintaining. It'll be a different. Pegasus offside. It'll be a different story against the Solomons. They don't really play the offside trap. They uh, actually talking to the to the Solomon Island uh, officials and players and so on. They were surprised the way Tahiti uh, played the offside trap because they like to play just an open game. They thought it was a bit unfair. But um, it won't be an easy game next week against the Solomon Islands as, in fact, the full-time whistle does go. Up. And sadly for uh, Australia, Mike Peterson won't be playing next yeah. week. Well, that's, that's, that's the unfortunate thing, but uh, he'll be there for the game against New Zealand. That's the most important game. Yes, that's certainly the case. But uh, either way, I think the 2-0 scoreline is uh, is a scoreline that Eddie Thompson should be very uh, very happy with overall, considering that he was down to 10 men for a major part of that uh, of that second half. 
And I understand that Eddie Thompson is making his way across to uh, Les Murray, but either way, Zlatko, uh, it's World Cup football. It really doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter what the final scoreline is. As long as you get your points, Australia are through now. They'll go on to play New Zealand uh, next, uh, next May. And uh, Eddie Thompson was talking about playing that game uh, late May and hopefully to get a bit of a hit out against um, USA, apparently. And, um, of course, the overseas players, he'd love to have them available. So anyway, let's cross now to Les Moe, who's down on the sideline with the national coach, Eddie Thompson. Thank you, Andy. And Eddie's with me now. Eddie, uh, a 2-0 victory. Surprisingly less than what happened in Papete. So uh, let's... Uh El fútbol búlgaro está de moda. Sus jugadores son las estrellas de muchos equipos europeos. Pero les falta aún un reto por cumplir. Llevar a su país al Mundial de Estados Unidos. No lo tienen fácil. Cuatro equipos luchan por dos plazas y Francia parece imparable. Esta noche Bulgaria no puede fallar ante Israel. Ganar y golear es el objetivo. Stoikov y Pénez tienen la palabra. Saludos, amigas y amigos. De nuevo el fútbol internacional en Antena 3 Televisión. De nuevo un partido de clasificación para el Mundial de Estados Unidos que se va a celebrar el año que viene y en esta ocasión un partido del grupo sexto de la zona europea con dos protagonistas. Uno de ellos, esos hombres que están ustedes viendo, son los integrantes de la selección de Israel que se va a enfrentar en el estadio Basil Levski de Sofía al anfitrión a Bulgaria. Bulgaria-Israel, decimoquinto partido del grupo sexto de clasificación, un encuentro muy interesante porque como han podido oír ustedes en el vídeo anterior, Bulgaria tiene que ganar, no puede fallar porque si lo hiciera podría tener consecuencias muy negativas de cara a esa posibilidad de acceder a la fase final del Mundial de Estados Unidos. Urruti, buenas noches, Hola. como siempre nuestro comentarista de excepción en estos encuentros, ¿cómo ves el partido de Bueno, pues efectivamente el partido lo veo duro, pero el Bulgaria tiene que ir a por todas, tiene que tratar de hacer un buen partido, ganar el encuentro y además sobre todo buscar un resultado alto en goles porque de esa forma eh, puede tener mucho mejor perfilado la clasificación. Efectivamente, de lo que se trata aquí hoy es de ganar, por supuesto, en cuanto a Bulgaria se refiere y también de golear. Si lo hace con una diferencia mayor de tres goles, conseguiría ya eh, equipararse a Francia, al líder del grupo sexto, y superarla en esa clasificación general de este grupo de la zona europea que ustedes están viendo ahora mismo. Francia es líder con 10 puntos en seis partidos, Bulgaria es segunda con ocho puntos en seis partidos también, ha perdido dos. Suecia es tercera con seis puntos, Austria cuarta con cuatro y cerrando esa clasificación, Finlandia e Israel, las cenicientas del grupo, que no han ganado ningún partido de los cuatro que han jugado y por lo tanto tienen cero puntos. Es un grupo este muy competido, hay cuatro equipos, cuatro países que optan a esas dos plazas para llegar a Estados Unidos, son Francia, Bulgaria, Suecia y Austria. Ahora mismo esos cuatro países tienen opciones de estar en Estados Unidos, por supuesto Francia es la que más tiene, porque ha ganado todos... Los encuentros menos uno, precisamente el que perdió ante Bulgaria y luego Bulgaria, Suecia y Austria, que serán las que, si las cosas siguen tal y como han marchado hasta ahora, serán, decimos, las que tendrán que jugarse y optar a esa segunda plaza. Por supuesto, este encuentro tiene también otros alicientes. Urruti, aquí vamos a ver a jugadores que militan en la Liga Española, jugadores búlgaros, Stoikov, Pénez... Y Jankov, no, no. aunque parece ser que Jankov quizá no esté en la alineación titular, el jugador que ha cedido el Atlético de Madrid al Valladolid, también estará Kiriakov, el eh, jugador también del Betis, Trifón Ivanov, es decir, muchos jugadores de la Liga Española que vamos a ver eh, in situ, que vamos a ver juntos jugando, porque una cosa es ser la estrella de sus clubes respectivos y otra que, que estén también eh, y lo hagan bien en sus respectivos países. Ahí estamos viendo la alineación de Bulgaria. ...que va a salir con Mikhailov en la puerta... ...Kiriakov, Ivanov, Markov, Rakov, Leskov, Iskrenov... ...Stoikov, Penev, Sirakov... ...y con el número 11, Balakov... ...una alineación en la que prácticamente... ...casi todos sus integrantes juegan fuera de Bulgaria... ...juegan fuera de su país... ...y es que hoy el seleccionador Dimitar Penev... ...el seleccionador búlgaro... 
Ha ah, echado mano de toda su artillería pesada. Ahí vemos ahí ahora mismo la alineación, el 11 titular y los reservas de Israel. Hitburg, Halfon, Hiller, Hazan, Sela, Klingberg, Vanin, Suárez, Rosenthal, Harachi y con el dosal número 11, Oana. Una alineación, la de Israel, bastante más joven en edad media que la de Bulgaria. Bulgaria tiene ya jugadores hechos y derechos, jugadores veteranos. Y lo que intenta con esta generación de futbolistas, el partido acaba de comenzar, cronómetros en marcha, es conseguir los éxitos a nivel de bloque, a nivel de selección, que individualmente cada uno de ellos están consiguiendo fuera de su país. Sí, no cabe ninguna duda que son jugadores de una talla internacional reconocida y que efectivamente tienen que y demuestran, estando en la selección también, que, esas, que esa categoría pues, efectivamente da como respuesta a estos, estos encuentros donde la clasificación es buena y donde ellos son partícipes de estos éxitos. Bulgaria que ha jugado hasta el momento sus encuentros, ha ganado cuatro y ha perdido dos. Ganó en el primer encuentro de esta fase de clasificación el año pasado a Finlandia a domicilio por 3-0. Luego ganaría en casa a Francia por dos goles a cero, perdería en Suecia por dos goles a cero y ganaría también en Israel a domicilio por dos goles a cero. Los últimos partidos han sido contra Austria, a domicilio, donde perdió por tres goles a uno. Y el último, el pasado 28 de abril, contra Finlandia en casa. Y que registró una victoria, dos goles a cero, goles de Stoikov y Jankov. Era el primer gol de Stoikov después de una sequía bastante sorprendente en un jugador como él. Hacía 60 días que no marcaba y marcó en ese encuentro de penalti en la Liga Española. Esa sequía ha durado un poquito más. Y se rompió el domingo pasado cuando marcó un gol al Cádiz. Hacía más de dos meses que Stoikov no marcaba. Un hombre que junto con Pénez son los encargados de llevar los tantos al marcador de la selección de su país. Israel que llega evidentemente con la intención de aprender, con la intención de ir conjuntando un equipo cada vez más competitivo... Es eh, evidentemente la cenicienta del grupo, no ha ganado ninguno de sus cuatro encuentros, perdió contra Austria por cinco goles a dos, contra Suecia por eh, tres goles a uno en su propia casa y también en su casa perdió contra Bulgaria el eh, 2 de diciembre del año pasado. Atención porque es la primera jugada de peligro del partido y podía haber eh, marcado Israel, hubiera sido una sorpresa tremenda. La verdad es que Urruti en esta fase de clasificación y tuvimos un ejemplo bastante reciente aquí en Antena 3 Televisión en el partido anterior que retransmitimos en, en Rumanía-Chipre cuando Chipre se adelantó en el marcador sí. y como te comentaba estamos viviendo bastantes sorpresas de estos equipos en principio modestos pero que evidentemente están evolucionando y que están alcanzando un nivel cada vez mayor Sí, de, nunca te puedes confiar porque cualquier equipo ya jugando en, esto, en estas competiciones que ya son no, ya tienen una categoría más que demostrada lo que pasa es que quizás no tengan el nivel que por ejemplo en este caso de, de Bulgaria pero es evidente que ahora mismo en una jugada han podido sorprender se ha quedado bastante parada la defensa de, de Bulgaria pensando que podía ser fuera de juego y sin embargo no han aprovechado, pero han estado a punto de sorprender en, este, en esta jugada. Una jugada que ocurría cuando estaba ya puesto en el cronómetro el minuto 3 del primer tiempo. Por supuesto el resultado es de Bulgaria 0 y Real 0 en este estadio nacional Basil Lesky con capacidad para 70.000 espectadores y que registra... Una buena entrada. El partido, como comentábamos, para Bulgaria es importante. De hecho, su entrenador, Pénez, no ha dudado un instante en traerse a toda su artillería pesada, excepto un hombre, excepto Emil Kostarinov, la estrella del Oporto portugués, que al final, por cuestiones físicas, no ha podido alinearse de salida, tampoco está en el banquillo con su equipo. Y mientras tanto que vemos como Israel, que no tiene ningún tipo de complejo, ninguna presión, aquí vienen a hacerlo lo mejor posible. Está de momento Urruti, si no llevando el control del partido, si acercándose, está jugando al menos en el campo de su rival de Bulgaria. Sí, está jugando bien, está jugando atrás con presión y además eh, intentando dejar adelantar la defensa para presionar. Y, y es un equipo incomodísimo para Bulgaria porque me consta de que no les va a dejar... No les va a dejar 
recibir la pelota con comodidad y muchísimo menos jugarlas. Ahí tenemos un caso de lo que puede ser eh, la mayoría del encuentro, que haya unos marcajes muy pegajosos y que eh, los jugadores búlgaros se encuentren muy incómodos en este campo porque la presión puede ser muy grande. De momento hemos visto ya uno de esos emparejamientos que parece van a ser definitivos durante todo el partido, el dorsal número 5 de Israel, Sela, que va a ser el encargado de sujetar a Lugo Penep, el jugador valencianista, un hombre que también llega a este encuentro en estado de gracia goleadora, lleva marcados bastantes goles consecutivos en las últimas jornadas ligueras con su equipo, en concreto el pasado sábado marcó el tanto del triunfo ante el Atlético de Madrid. Sí, está rato, sí. 18 goles, Lugo Ponep, y es el cuarto goleador, el cuarto pichichi de la Liga Española hasta el momento. Es eh, Leskov, el jugador del Hamburgo, que manda ya para Lugo Ponep. Y Fenov, el balón que ha salido fuera y será saque de puerta. La ausencia de Kostadinov es la ausencia, la baja más importante de Bulgaria, mientras que en Israel sí hay otras con respecto a otros encuentros que ha jugado en esta fase de clasificación importantes. Tendríamos que hablar de Zoar, el hombre que ha marcado dos de los tres goles que ha cosechado Israel en esta fase de clasificación, también de Ben Simón, de Abby Cohen, los dos defensas, y de la estrella juvenil de Slomo Sharf, el seleccionador Nimni, un hombre que junto con Banin, que sí está en el terreno de juego, con el dorsal número 7, forman un poco la cosecha, la mejor cosecha de hombres jóvenes que el seleccionador de Israel está llevando hacia arriba, está intentando que sean la sabia nueva que haga de este equipo, de esta selección de Israel, al menos un conjunto que cree problemas a todos aquellos que se enfrenten a ellos. Es el corner. Ahí estamos viendo el banquillo de Bulgaria. Y es Balakov, el jugador del Sporting de Lisboa Portugués, el que lanzó ese córner y esa zurda que ha enganchado es no, no es otra que la de Stoikov, es un remate ya característico del jugador sí. azulgrana. Es un jugador que cuando viene palma bien y ha tenido bastante, bastante habilidad para, para palmarla. Lo que pasa es que no le ha ido a la portería. Me parece que el portero se haya precipitado un poco, en vez de despejar, yo creo que estaba solo como para poder sujetar la pelota. Y el balón ha venido, le ha venido en buenas condiciones a, a Risto para poder empalmarlo. Risto también que efectivamente es un goleador nato y un hombre goleador, si no, si no empieza a meter goles pronto, se suele, se suele martirizar bastante. Y ahora parece que ha encontrado la onda otra vez. La encontró el domingo pasado ante el Cádiz. En un gol que luego celebró con cierta rabia porque la verdad es que hacía tiempo y ya que no, que no lo hacía y ya empezaban incluso a decir que qué le pasaba a Stoikov. No, pero suele bueno, pasar porque es, basta que... Que hay rachas. Eh, sí, sí, es que, y basta que un delantero de esta categoría eh, no meta para que se obsesione y entonces la obsesión le pueda incluso eh, complicar más esa situación. El saque de banda de Iskrenov, pero hubo falta dentro del área de Israel y así lo ha señalado el colegiado del encuentro, el árbitro el turco Kakar un hombre que en esta fase de clasificación solo ha arbitrado otro partido el Checoslovaquia Islas Feroe lo que significa que no le ofrecen los partidos más importantes, su suerte, está claro al menos en teoría ¿eh? Luego no se se puede, no, cualquier partido se puede complicar no, ¿eh? se le ha, no se le ha visto mucho no, este, este árbitro El carácter de Risto Stoico, un hombre fundamentalmente ganador. Nato, ganador nato. Ganador, na ganador nato, siempre intenta, por supuesto, ganar. Los partidos nunca se esconde y eso es algo que siempre hay que agradecer al jugador de fútbol, además en un jugador que de su talla y que cobra muchísimo para 
para eso, para hacerse ver. Sí. 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 No cobráis muchísimo de no, 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 porque el jugador efectivamente es un jugador que lo da todo y es uno de los jugadores que aparece tener en tu equipo, no, no precisamente a la contra. <risa> Bueno, pues ya a punto casi de llegar al minuto 10 de partido, Bulgaria-Israel desde el Estadio Nacional, Basil Lesky de Sofía, el resultado empate a cero, nos ha movido todavía el marcador, Bulgaria es la favorita, por supuesto, de este encuentro, tiene que ganar y tiene que golear, al menos ganar por una diferencia de tres goles si quiere liderar este grupo 6 de la zona europea. Es Siraco, el que lleva la pelota por banda derecha. El balón bombeado, el toque de Stoikov y Iskenov, se metió esa pierna izquierda, se le marchó ligeramente desviado el balón a la derecha de Gidburg. El cancerbero israelí Bonnie Gidburg, uno de los pocos veteranos que tiene Israel, junto con el capitán, con Klinger, de los pocos que superan los 27 años. Israel que está en la zona europea cuando no es un país evidentemente del continente europeo por cuestiones políticas como ustedes ya saben el boicot de los países árabes ha hecho que esta selección nunca desde hace mucho tiempo no haya podido ganarse la clasificación en las competiciones eh, internacionales en su continente en Asia y haya tenido, haya tenido que hacerlo en otros en el anterior, en el de 1990, lo hizo por Oceanía, en este de 1994, el de Estados Unidos, por Europa. Algo que a ellos eh, realmente les interesa porque de lo que se trata es de aprender y de entrar en las estructuras futbolísticas de Europa. Mundial. Ese es Rosenthal, perdón, es Ronen Harasi. Rosenthal lleva el dorsal número 9, el hombre más conocido del conjunto de Israel, Tony Rosenthal, jugador de momento y hasta el 30 de junio del Liverpool de Inglaterra. El balón para Ronen Arashi intentaba la combinación, ahí estuvo bien Trifón Ivanov, el jugador del Betis que hace 